If you know me, you know I love a good shooter. Or is that schmuck? Whatever you prefer, really. The, the kind of game which is grateful when you can only carve out a small amount of time for gaming. Away from the pressures of the open worlds or the never-ending quests. Something you could fire up, enjoy a blast with, then move on. But as I've mentioned in the past, I'm not a fan of more modern ones, where the focus is about sneaking between dense bullet patterns and puzzling out obtuse scoring systems. But perhaps that's on me and how shops are some of my zone out games for when I need to disconnect a bit from the rest of the world. Something else that shouldn't surprise you to hear is that I love seeing new games being coded for vintage machines. And when I learned of the release of some new Game Boy shmups, my curiosity was struck and I decided to put this episode together to check out the creativity in the homebrew scene for these two particular games. Firstly, we have Lunar Lancer, released in 2024 as a means of celebrating the original Game Boy's 35th birthday. For the most part, things are as conventional as you get. You pilot your little starfighter and have to clear out its five stages, each offering its own set of threats, both in terms of environments, but also the enemies. The first thing you'll notice as you play is there's no scoring here. Seriously. At first, I was taken aback by this. But honestly, I think it's an interesting touch. I find it allows you to focus on mastering the game. And while it doesn't look at it at first, there really is a challenge you'll need to master here. Which so happens to be why I'm thankful it offers unlimited continues, which I found helped greatly in giving you room to practice those levels as you try to work your way through them. Something else which helps is the power-up system. Your ship has a primary shot which fires us a slow, weak bullet, but you can also collect power-ups. These offer a secondary weapon, whether an additional weak shot or a stronger shot in single or dual bullet varieties. They've all got a limited supply of ammo, so not going overboard with them is very important. I mean, you don't want to run out of ammo as you reach the end of level boss, do you? Really, you don't. Trust me on that. Away from that, I adore the aesthetics of Lunar Lancer, which uses the limited capabilities of the original Game Boy to great effect, with everything looking clear, which is very important against the screen of the original system. It's got a cracking soundtrack as well. Again, it fits the vibes and the pacing incredibly well for what the hardware can do. It might not be one I'd throw on outside of the game, but when playing it, I found it a great match. That is for sure. Whilst I generally am pretty happy with Lunar Lancer and find it a great game to enjoy, it does plenty of things right after all, there are a few things which don't quite land properly for me. The first of these is really around the damage that your base weapon does against the enemies. Now in most shmups, enemies are split up between popcorn enemies, those which could be taken out with a single shot from your base or weakest weapon, and tougher ones which usually require a few more. In Lunar Lancer, found too many of the enemies you encountered needed a few too many shots to take out. In fact, I'd say that sometimes this gave you little to no error when they came on screen. If you're not hitting them as soon as they appear on screen and basically memorize their patterns, there's a chance you'll end up dying by colliding with them as they get to you. It also doesn't help that I think this price might be a little too large proportionally. It really pushes that pressure on you to be quick on the fire button to get taking them out or, like I said, die from colliding with them. Once again, the unlimited continues really helps alleviate some of that frustration though, as does the inclusion of a password system. Completing each stage awards you a password that you can use to jump right back in there when starting a new session. Being able to pick up where you left off from a previous session might feel weird in a shmup, but really, Lunar Lancer is not your traditional shmup as much as it looks like it. It certainly manages to bridge that retro experience with something a little more modern in parts. And I don't know about you, but that's one very fine thing to achieve in my book. Now for the second shop in this video, and it's Dungan GB2. 
released in 2023 as a tribute to the 25th anniversary of the Game Boy Color. Like its predecessor, Dungan GB2 isn't a straightforward shmup. No, it's a boss rush game, where each stage pits you against a single boss enemy. A challenge that could be seriously intense, because these bosses are based on those in the finest traditions of bullet hell shooters. Yet, I know it might sound odd for me to be recommending a game like this based on my earlier comments, but don't say I don't try to challenge myself at least from time to time. That being said, what Dungan GV2 really stands out from the general bullet hell crowd is that you don't need to worry about the scoring mechanics. Sure, you do score points, but there's no combos or chains or hidden things to worry about. Instead, points are simply earned when your shots damage the boss. As you'd expect, each boss has multiple phases, and surviving those means you'll need to learn each phase when the boss transitions between them and work out where you need to position yourself to reduce the risk of being hit. But also where you need to be to best deliver the most damage, as each stage carries a time limit. So if you can take out the boss quickly, as unlikely as that may be, you will earn more bonus points for it. Thankfully, the game doesn't end once time runs out, you just won't get an end of stage bonus. Something Dangan GB2 brings to the table over its predecessor is your choice of character. When starting a new game, you've got the choice of one or two pilots, each offering a different secondary weapon. Ali gives you the bobs seen in the previous game. When these are activated, they'll clear out all the bullets on screen, giving you a small respite from the chaos unfolding around you. Tally, the second pilot, gives you a shield, similar to what you get when you respawn after being killed. Funnily enough, I thought this one was going to ease the challenge a bit, but I found when playing, it didn't really help all that much. It just doesn't last long enough. I guess those precious few seconds when you have no bullets on screen after using a bomb matters more than you might think. So obviously most of the footage you're going to see here is me playing using Ali. That also leads into some of the features to help make Dungan GB2 a little more approachable for mortals like me. Basically, the first of these is a difficulty option you can select before starting, and that adjusts how many lives and shields or bombs you'll get as you start. Sadly, it only changes that and it doesn't really tweak the intensity of the bosses or their attacks, so it's still going to make you stay around on your toes as you try to get through each wave without losing too many lives. What also helps for practicing is having unlimited continues after a game over. Being able to dive right back in once you're blasted is a real convenience, particularly when you think you've almost got it after having made a few previous attempts too. It should be no surprise to say that Dungan GB2, like its predecessor, really pushes the capability of the Game Boy. Well, in this case, Game Boy Color. Very hard. I'm really impressed with just how many bullets are on screen here, with no sign of flicker or slowdown, as both of those are a big negative for clarity and responsiveness. At least for me, I've always struggled with certain other games that threw enough on screen to cause a lot of slowdown or flicker. Um, it was hard for me to track. Here, it's crystal clear, crystal responsive, and it doesn't really interfere at all. I mean, carrying on from that, the contrast between the bullets, your ship, and the background graphics means that it is very easy to see what's happening. And that's essential when things are as chaotic as they get here. I'm also impressed with the sprite trickery on display for at least one of the bosses, seeing it root out around the arena while spewing out its barrage of bullets at all angles really is something I don't think I've seen in many games, especially on an 8-bit machine like the Game Boy. And once again, this is all combined with a cracky soundtrack. Classic Game Boy chip tunes which keep up with the unfolding chaos and deliver that serious vibe as you get into the zone and try to get focused on blasting your bosses away. Once again, it's something I feel a good shot really needs and Dangun GB2 certainly delivers on that. What could be a, a tricky shove genre of shmup? I really appreciate how Dungan GB2 tries to make it a little more palatable and approachable for mere gaming mortals. The addition of those difficulty levels and continues contribute to giving you opportunities to practice it 
and not just get obliterated on your first attempts. And I think that really helps draw you in and draw you coming back to try and try again and work your way through it. And that's something I think is the sign of a good game design. To not just completely punish you, but let you come back, try to master it on your own time and in your own way. Now there we have it, a pair of cool, relatively recent shoot-ups for the Game Boy family. I love that the Game Boy is a system which is getting a fair amount of modern games being made for it. Even if most of those tend to not be the kinds of games that strike my fancy. Of course, that will probably be different for you, and that's great. So considering both of these shooters do it quite well, even though both do have a few frustrations at points, both push their respective platforms pretty darn hard. But more importantly, not to the point of breaking, which is a sign of balancing hardware mastery with solid game design. I feel both of these games are a great pick for when you just want to scratch the shmup itch, but also need something a little more compact to enjoy in a quick session. They're the perfect games for when you've got some time to kill waiting for an appointment or a train ride or the like. Which for me is the joy both of these games bring. Considering both are free downloads from their respective authors page over on itch, there should be no reason for you not to grab them, even if it's just to fire them up for a quick spin in your favourite Game Boy emulator, and celebrate those anniversaries. They will be in the video description down below so you can see exactly what you need and just go right to them. But that's pretty much from me here, as always if you enjoyed the video, Go give those games a spin and let's talk about them in the comments. There's also the other stuff you can do to help me and the show out. Consider subscribing to the channel, making sure you give it a thumbs up and all of that, and maybe consider going above and beyond and supporting what I do over on Patreon. Again, the link is in the video description, and its support really helps this channel thrive and survive in a space when it's much harder for smaller independent channels to do so. Trust me, it all helps out a lot. Seriously. Finally though, and most importantly, I just want to thank you all very much for watching.